uh, my grandfather and my dad. <coughs> they, they were both territorials. Uh, my grandfather was the sergeant of the local group, the half company of the second battalion of the fourth border regiment. That's the assembled company after the memorial march service, uh, Edward VII's funeral, they had marched down Main Street. Kirby Lonson Brass Band, Alexander Pearson, who wrote the annals of Kirby Lons, the officer in command, in leading, and just to the left of the, the volunteers is my grandfather, Harry Jackson. He's, he's the sergeant at the side. The man really in charge was an old professional soldier, uh, Sergeant Spooner, a very tall man, and he was employed by Lord Henry Cavendish Bentinck to run this amateur group of which my grandfather uh, was uh, the territorial sergeant. <clears throat> but come, came the war, he was too old to go to the 1914 war. My father was in the same group and he would be a lance corporal when war broke out mm -hmm. in 1914. My grandfather yeah. and my dad. And grandfather was in the West London Cumberland Yeomanry. But I don't think my dad was. West London Cumberland Yeomanry eventually became the border regiment. Right. My dad is the Lance Corporal. Right. He does look like you. <laughs> there is a likeness. And he married my mother. And then in 1915, off he went to India for four or five years uh, and was stationed at uh, 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 Peshawar and Pune. And I heard this story of marching up the Khyber Pass to Jalalabad. Uh, and so those were just a few stories I remember that my, my dad talked about. Um, and he became regimental sergeant major. And really, it was possibly the most luxurious time of his life because he had his own bungalow and his own servant. And they don't get any more important than that. Perhaps colonels, but... Mm. <laughs> I think he mentioned one Kirby Lonson man who was killed man called Denison, and he was leading a horse across a, a level crossing. And there was a, a train a long way away, and the horse could feel this train coming. And the, the horse froze and couldn't move. And Des Denison stayed with his horse, trying to get it to come, but it wouldn't move. And they were both killed. And that's the only fatality I knew anything about. That gentleman there, I was told he was made a Lance Corporal at, at, at Sunday Parade. Mm -hmm. uh, by tea time, he'd had so much beer celebrating that he was expressing his opinion of the military prowess of the Colonel and the family background of the Regimental Sergeant Major that he got busted back to private again. <laughs> Do you know any of the others on there at all? Billy Medcalf. Yeah. I think I remember him. I think he was a Caston man. Mm -hmm. Story, I knew him. I can't remember any of the others, but mm. they, were, they were still still about in Kirby Lonsdale when I was a boy, you see. Yeah. I was away at sea when I was 16. So I missed Kirby Lonsdale for uh, five or six years because I was all over the world, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I joined a ship called the Wairangi in February 1940. It was a vessel designed to carry cargo, but also within six days I was a member of a gun crew, the ship, the, the six-inch gun crew. Uh, we saw uh, is it, Fock Wolf things in the distance, you know, German planes in the distance. But they were just looking out for us, you know, they weren't, weren't attacking us. 
And after the fall of France, of course, <coughs> the U-boats could operate. We'd just come through a hurricane, which was quite exciting, and suddenly he action stations. So I <coughs> sprinted at great speed to the stern where we had this old six-inch gun and took my station, which was sitting behind the, beside, beside this gun, winding a wheel, which I think elevated the battle. And the other boy sat on the other side to make the battle going from one side to the other. I'm pretty sure we didn't hit the submarine. Uh, they didn't hit us. And in point of fact, I don't think we could have hit the Queen Mary. I, I was in convoys that got attacked, but the one ship I did see go down went, went down in less time than it says that it takes me to tell you. Crocky, there it was and there it wasn't, you know, it was a bit of an uh, uh, <coughs> unhappy time was that. In the North Atlantic, uh, you didn't get into your pyjamas, you slept in, your, in the clothes you were in. Uh, and very likely with your life jacket on. Of course, this, these young men suffering from post-traumatic stress. And thinking about that, I do not like to be in a room with the door shut. If the, if the door's shut, I feel uneasy. And if I'm in a, cra a lot of men in a, a big crowd, in a, in a hall with a door shut, I, I, how the hell am I, how am I going to get out of here? Because getting out was a pretty important part of my young life. Yeah. Mm. When I came home, I was ill. Parents at that time lived at number three Fairbank. And I remember watching the assembly of the old soldiers from my bedroom window at number three Fairbank. Uh, but that's all I remember, uh, until I began to be involved uh, myself. Um, and of course, <clears throat> there were members of the British Legion who really thought that um, uh, I shouldn't be a full member of the British Legion because I was not in the armed forces. And that went on for some time. Uh, but now I have a letter from the headquarters of the British Legion to say that abs that's absolute nonsense and they sent me a little badge. They've assured me that I could, I, I have been, had the right to be a full member of the British Legion. Absolutely. <laughs> why, why should we keep doing Remembrance Day? Why should we keep remembering? Well... <clears throat> You wouldn't be as comfortable as you are now if those men had not given their lives. It's quite as simple as that. <laughs>